sectors and services of the ICT industry, their primary roles and products provided. So we are going to be looking at a lot of subcategories of jobs that exist within the ICT industry. And while we are going to look at about 10 different types of areas of employment, there's a lot more and there's constantly more being developed as the ICT industry is ever evolving due to new discoveries in technology through research and development. So this is just a basic summary uh, of different employment avenues to the ICT industry, but of course there are a lot more. So we are looking at the different ICT sectors here and firstly we're going to look at software development and here we're talking about uh, job roles that assist in the development of new programs through the creation of application interfaces and the writing of programming code so as we know software is created through code and you need to know programming languages such as Java Python basic in order to create the programs and then the programs act as the foundation of technology okay that allow either users to interact or the technology to manage itself uh, very similar to this then we have computer science okay and here we're talking about individuals who manufacture a new technology in relation to the hardware and supporting software so as we're saying with supporting software there they would interact with software developers to create that software side or they may do a bit of software developing on their own but we're also talking about the technology side itself the physical technology putting those chips in and adding different hardware components to create new physical technology as well so this is done in order to satisfy market or organizational needs. We create new technology and sometimes a lot of computer engineering is getting existing technology and making it more efficient to a user or business or minimizing the size of technology. As you know, iPads are always getting thinner and your MacBooks are always getting thinner. Chips are getting smaller so we can make smaller laptops. Okay, that's all a part of computer engineering. Next, we have infrastructure. And in infrastructure, we're talking about job roles that install the required hardware and cabling necessary for organizations to establish a network connection. These days, if you're not connected to the internet, you're pretty much isolated from the world. We need an internet connection. Now, obviously we all have ones in our home, but for businesses, it needs to be even more tightly constructed. Okay, it needs more secure lines so that the business can operate so that they don't fall offline. And oftentimes as well, they're communicating with businesses overseas. So we're talking about the installation of cabling and routers and all of that, that allow for the business to obviously stay connected within their internal network, as well as to wider networks through the internet. This may include uh, the implementation of telecommunications as the foundations for online platform. So uh, here in Australia, we've got the NBN network that we've got an optic fiber uh, cabling coming out from our business's physical site and connecting to the optical fiber cabling in the street, as well as Wi-Fi connection that connects us to satellites in the sky, all of that so that the business has the technology to stay connected to existing networks. And obviously, people need to set that up and that's what infrastructure is all about. The fourth area we're going to look at here is information security and um, this one's just booming at the moment as we have kind of um, lots of global businesses and these global businesses all exist on the internet but through the internet it's kind of giving these tunnels into the businesses where unauthorized access can be made in order to get in that business and steal data okay and gain that unauthorized access so there is big no, uh, money in the information security industry who protect an organization's data okay using a variety of methods such as login procedures firewalls encryption and backup okay these methods need to constantly be updated to stay ahead of hackers and also need to redevelop new methods that hackers might not know of to keep ahead of the game so it's a constant ongoing process to keep in front of those who may wish to get unauthorized access into a system so um, it is big money in the information security industry obviously it also known as the cyber security industry in order to protect the data of these multi-billion dollar businesses as well as smaller scale businesses as well to protect the data of their clients and their own financial data as well from here then we've got robotics and AI, okay, which is the manufacturing of robotic hardware, which is supported by artificial intelligence, okay, which may use uh, technologies such as neural networks and knowledge bases. Okay, and then these technologies can assist both individuals and businesses through the automation process uh, of doing tasks for the individual and all businesses. Okay, as we know now, cars are developed through assembly lines, okay, and those robots on the assembly line put the cars together and they operate on their own accord and use their own sensors uh, to see the actual car as it's being developed and put the parts in making it safer for people and restricting them from doing more dangerous jobs okay and more and more jobs are being automized for the or 
for this reason for the safety of humans as well as being cost efficient for businesses too okay so the robotics is supported by ai which obviously allows for the technology to do its own thinking there but obviously this industry also raises social and ethical issues too in the changing nature of work in that people may lose jobs or have to retrain but obviously a very exciting industry too as we know our drone technology is on the boom and drone technology looks to be the next step in uh, the delivery process in uh, things such as uber where uh, products will be delivered straight to people's doors no longer having to drive on the roads but hopefully fly those products through the sky but that's all a process that might be happening it might never happen as well based on legislation too but that is the robotics and AI industry. Next, we've got e-commerce and e-commerce you're probably using already. Okay, in e-commerce, we're talking about online platforms that allow for shoppers to access markets through the internet, search these products and services online. And then uh, as with things such as eBay and Amazon, they can then put these products into a shopping cart and then purchase through online banking their products. And then the things get delivered to their home straight to their door, all the items that they've ordered. Okay, so we're talking here about building these online platforms, building these websites, making connections uh, so that they can have e-commerce tools within them to make transactions and communicate with user banks. And then obviously, uh, also being communication with delivery partners who then will send through the post globally products to people's front doors. Okay, so uh, lots of different components to e-commerce, but kind of the, the front door of the business now is their website, okay, which has to be accessible through users' computers. Next, we've got R&D, which is for research and development. And these are uh, people who are involved in investigating, creating, trialing, all for the development of new technology that can support individuals and businesses. This is paramount this level because when we're creating new technology, we've got to test it out before we put it on the market because if we put a dud on the market, it can ruin our company's name. So we do need to trial it and test it, okay? And obviously, this R&D area would be done in conjunction with computer engineers and software developers, but also with scientists and professors and market researchers trying to distinguish what does the market want and how will this new technology benefit the market. So we're, we're testing things out here before we start creating it. So project managers may also be involved here too to, to aid in this stage in the research and development to ensure that what we're developing is A, going to work and B, that the market wants it as well. Okay, we don't want to develop something that no one wants. All right, so a very exciting area here of creating new technology. Next, we've got retail and retail, we're talking about both local and online stores that allow customers to purchase different types of technology. So they are buying whether walking into JB Hi-Fi or Big W, looking at a product and buying it over the counter or through going to websites and buying them online through e-commerce tools. But obviously products need to be able to be obtained and retail is the one that allows us to purchase those products. Okay, and so a necessity in that, that's where we go when we wanna purchase new technology. And people in the retail industry need to know these products. Customers are going to ask questions. Why should they buy one product over another? Hopefully retail support can help out uh, customers in that. And showing, yep, this certain product caters to you. Um, and they're not just directing to the most expensive, but specifically what helps you with your needs as a user. The next industry is data centers, which are storage centers for large amounts of data, okay, which may be used by organizations or individuals. And a good example here is cloud technology and a lot of businesses and individuals are using cloud technology to not only store their data but back up their data as well many businesses use google drive as their online platform for creating their documents and pretty much all their documents are then stored in the cloud in google drive servers which are located all over the world but then also people use icloud for the backing up of data backing up their data that is saved on their system and then it automatically syncs with a server at Apple and keeps pretty much everything on their desktop backed up and emulated on the server at Apple as well. Okay, so protecting data there. So these data centers obviously store, you know, heaps of data there, but then they would need to be supported by information security businesses and cybersecurity businesses to protect the data of all these millions of individuals who are storing their data in these data centers. So I hope you can also see here a bit of interconnection here between industries. The final category of job we're looking at is then ICT service. And then this then also relates to what I just said about retail and that people need to know about products and how to support products when purchasing, but also about when working in organizations that use ICT as well. We need to have help desk support, okay, and service uh, individuals 
whether within the organization or through a third party organization who can support businesses and individuals with the use of technology that they've purchased. Okay, so it, can, it may be helping users connect to networks, uh, creating user accounts or troubleshooting issues people are having with technology, uh, depending on the context of the ICT service. If they are within a specific industry, yep, they're gonna be setting up the accounts for people in the workplace, connecting them to printers, ensuring they have a network connection, allowing them to access uh, resources on the business's uh, network, and then also ensuring that they have permissions that grant them access to some files, but not others based on their job roles. So that's if the ICT service is within a specific organization. But if they're an external uh, service, it might be that they support a specific product. So when you have an issue with your iPad, you contact Apple's uh, service and they help you fix your iPad and get you back on the iPad. And that's all they help with, with their specific products or service that they supply you or your business. So it's kind of twofold. It can be first party or third party there. So I hope this video is giving you an understanding of the just 10 different sectors and services of the ICT industry. As I said at the beginning of this video, there are a lot more and there's a lot more being developed because it's such an exciting industry. But these are 10 different classifications of different areas which do overlap in areas and obviously work it with each other. And we'll look at that in a future video of how these sectors and services do interact with each other uh, through the ICT industry. And we've said it before as well that the ICT industry is a foundation industry which supports all other industries with their workflow. It's kind of the, the lifeline um, that's key Keeps other businesses going through the use of technology and online communications, allowing them to conduct business uh, globally. So I hope you understand, obviously, how these 10 different job roles play a role in that and just how exciting an industry the ICT industry is. And I hope this gives you some guidance in which direction you may wish to go to once you finish your studies.